Good morning, everybody. Welcome to TLD Cast Friday. How are you? Um, great to have everybody in. Mark, Kara, Christiana, Michael, so nice to see you. And of course, Alan Natachu is going to be talking today. Um, I'm super excited about that. I'm kind of sticking in this room. We, we were sort of chatting beforehand, and um, that's why we're a little late. We're just sort of getting carried away with things. But I am super um, interested in learning more about Adobe Cloud Sync because I, I run Adobe products in both my personal and, and professional stuff. And I never use Cloud Sync. And, um, you know, I use Dropbox. I use Google Drive. I'm just, you know, so I'm really excited to hear more about, about that. And then, of course, Adobe Premiere Rush. I had not, not heard about that um, product until um, you had mentioned you want to talk about it. And so I've been researching it. And so this is going to be really interesting for me as well. But before we move forward with that, I want to just mention real quick, um, Monday, we have Karen North and Chakra Smith talking about learning technology degrees on Monday. Next week is gonna be busy. Wednesday, we're gonna have Andrew Hughes and Susan Manos about, uh, let's see, what are they talking about? Um, Procter & Gamble about a project that they delivered. And then the Friday after that, we have Thomas Seelock for the final episode of our <laughs> UX playlist, which has been absolutely amazing. I don't know if anybody caught Matthew Daniel um, this, uh, last Wednesday, but he is like, I am so surprised. I have never spoken to him before. Passionate, um, hardcore. Like he says, he was really, really great. Check out the recording. If you can, he's amazing. So, so many incredible insights and, uh, UX is definitely something everyone should be looking into. And actually I wanted to, at some point, Alan, I want to catch up with you a little bit on UX too, because I'm mm -hmm. sure that you have some experience um, with user experience as well. Um, but anyway, that would be us um, going off the rails if we did that today. <laughs> so, um, and it's a Friday. We, we're allowed to. <laughs> we're allowed to. Um, so yeah, let's get into this conversation about Adobe Cloud Sync. I, you know, I have my own questions. Like, can you just describe it and let me, you know, I would like to know just like, should I even be using it? And like, what is the big deal? Um, you know, is, is it really that helpful? And then I'm going to go ahead and minimize my screen. All right. Let's see. Well, with Adobe Creative Cloud Sync, I like to use it because not, um, I have a lot of assets that I want to use. I have a lot of color palettes that I have to follow. I got some text boxes that I want to keep. Um, you know, just kind of standard blocks of text. And I use Adobe Creative Cloud Sync to upload that to the cloud. And whenever I'm working on a project, I just drag and drop it into my current project. Um, you could also use Creative Cloud Sync to host files, um, host PDFs. And it's a real quick, easy way to utilize the services that are built into Adobe, into your Adobe products. One thing that I would like to mention is that uh, I am using an enterprise version of uh, Creative Cloud, and I believe the same features are available to you if you subscribe to Creative Cloud. Um, I think there's limited access if you have a free Creative Cloud account. Like you just sign in with your Adobe ID and you use a free account. Your, your mileage may vary with that, but I know paid customers and especially enterprise cu customers will be able to benefit from this. No, that's awesome. And, and let me ask you this. So do you use Dropbox or Google Drive or any other, you know, sync type of, uh, you know, file storage, you know, service? Yeah, I do. Uh, yeah. It all depends on who I'm working with and what they're comfortable with. What um, I mean, so what would the advantages be of using Adobe Cloud Sync versus like, say, Dropbox or something else? It's already built into the Adobe platform. You hit a button, share, and it goes up. Yeah. And you can also, um, oh, I'm losing my train of thought. Uh, not only can you upload stuff from directly from the applications, but you can go to the Adobe Creative Cloud Sync website and upload content from there. Nice. So it's the same type of scenario where you actually have a drive on your mm -hmm. on your computer yep. that that is synchronizing and performance wise it. Same kind of thing as like say Dropbox and Google Drive. It syncs quickly. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And when we get into Adobe Pre Premiere Rush, this is what actually sold me on Creative Cloud Drive. Okay. With that cool. application. So I mean, 
And do you want to talk about that? Like how you use it in your daily sort of, you know, in, 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 in your production and workflow processes. Mm -hmm. okay. But before we do, let's take a moment of silence for Windows Movie Maker. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I bring that up because I love video editing and I love teaching people how to edit video and move Windows Movie Maker was one of the best, if not easiest entry video editors out there. You just go in, make a couple edits and boom, you got a video. A lot of people were happy with that, which means I was happy showing people how to use it. Oh, wait, uh, this is weird because you're like a Mac guy. I know, right? Actually praising Windows Movie Maker. Like how is that? Well, I, well know, that's I, before I got into iMovie. Okay. And for the Windows side, you know, they had Windows Movie Maker, then they took it away. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I spent years trying to find a replacement for it. Yeah, yeah. No, I agree. I used to use mm -hmm. Movie Maker as well. And um, it just went bye-bye at some point, and then I moved on to Camtasia. And Camtasia's great. It has a multi, um, it's PC and Mac oriented. You could go from one platform to another that way, but it's hard to go to mobile. Camtasia has a mobile app where you can record add assets to that app and then transfer it to Camtasia, but there's no editing program on a mobile device. Yeah. The Mac has iMovie and iOS devices have iMovie as well. And you can edit on the Mac or you can edit on an iOS device and trade uh, projects back and forth between those two devices. It's hard on a PC. Uh, there have been several apps out there. Avid used to be, do one. Pinnacle used to do one where mm -hmm. they would sync up with those particular programs. Adobe Premiere Rush is multi-platform. You can work on a PC, you can work on a Mac, you can work on mobile device, be it iOS or Android. And it costs money? Yes, you gotta have a Creative Cloud subscription. Okay. Uh, if you do have it, uh, specifically the one with Premiere. Mm -hmm. So you either subscribe, subscribe to the entire Creative Cloud or get the one that has um, just Premiere only or oh. whatever. Adobe's weird with their licensing, whatever package that's in. Right, right. I thought I saw like for, you know, I thought I saw this thing where Adobe Premiere Rush is free if you're just using it on the desktop. But if you want to be able to use it on mobile, then you have to actually have to have the paid subscription. But I don't know if that was accurate. I never tested it out or anything. If you want to test it out to see if it works for you, you can log in and you're offered three projects. And once those three projects are up, you um, have to log in and pay with your um, Adobe Creative Cloud. Yeah, yeah, okay. Look, and we've got Sam in now, mm -hmm. another, another expert. So you gonna show us some stuff or um, can I hide myself and we're just get going? Yeah. Okay. All right. So the first thing we're going to talk about is Adobe Creative Cloud and how it syncs uh, between different uh, devices, between different applications. And then we turn on my screen sharing. And I'm going to turn off my video for this. OK. So I've been working a lot in InDesign. I can't find my InDesign on this screen, so I will open it back up. InDesign, there. And I use several assets. I collect colors. And rather than going back to a PDF that has the branding guides for um, where I work, Madison College in Madison, Wisconsin, um, I can save those different colors, those different layouts in uh, Adobe Creative Cloud, and it makes my creation so much faster. And I'm just going to create a new project. Uh, InDesign, for those of you who don't know, it's a page layout tool. It's very easy. And if you are designing PDFs, um, uh, custom-made PDFs, it does have a lot more accessibility features uh, built in. So when you export it out and you want to keep your PDF accessible, this is a great program to use. So I got my thing here. I got my properties tab. I can add pages to this. 
Uh, but up here, there's this little tab called CC Libraries. That's the Creative Cloud Libraries. And you can create different libraries depending on the project. Uh, I work a lot with Madison College documentation, so I got to keep my colors. I got to keep a standard info box that I put out on all my documents. But I'm working if I'm working on something specific, like right now, I'm working on in-room guides for our new WebEx rooms. I can create a content library for that. Uh, over this past year, I was at Learning Dev Camp talking about how to create 360 uh, VR to tours using a free application. Well, I got all my assets for that here. This one is, uh, so I'm gonna stick with the Madison College library. And I got my standard info page. It has a lot of text, it's already been pre-formatted. So when I drag it over here onto my page and drop it, all that information pops up. Not only that, but any specific headings, any text, textiles will appear with that as well. Sorry, I've been working a lot in this, so I'm like, I put it in here, so I gotta put it in its right place. <laughs> but let's say I did not like this color. I want to change the color. Well, according to our branding guide, we can change the color. Uh, we have two primary colors. I can highlight that and change the color. That works. Or if I wanna get funky and work with our secondary colors, I have my favorites. I like to work with blues, purples, and greens when creating, with, uh, creating my documents. So I have those preloaded. The question is, I got a question. Does that work outside of InDesign? Yeah, let's go ahead and check that out. Let's open up a Photoshop document. Create new, and I'm just gonna create a document here. Default Photoshop size. In InDesign, I had the CC libraries button here on the upper right-hand side. It doesn't automatically show. If it's missing from your program, I believe it's under window or view. And if anyone else knows, please pop pop in. <laughs> Let's see, graphic web. Let's do the essentials workspace. Learn libraries. So I uh, brought up my libraries. It's just a little bit different setup. Um, within the Adobe product line, you have these windows, you have these tabs, and if you want, you can actually tear them off and put them someplace else. You can move the tab, adjust it so that it's part of the main tabs here. But I do have my color palettes, and I do have my text. It won't allow me to do that, but let's go ahead and try a text box. Lorem Ipsum. So it won't allow me to drag the text box, but I can go in here and change the color if I wanted to. It's been a long time since I've been working, uh, since I work in Photoshop, I've been more in document creation. Let's see. Let's go to color here. All right, well, we're not, we're gonna skip around that because uh, my Photoshop skills are really lacking at the moment. So I'll go back to InDesign. But you could, but you saw you were able to pull content from um, one area to another. Oh, there we go. Thanks, Rick. <laughs> Uh, that was a great suggestion. And now I'm playing with the colors. All right. So that's one way of using Adobe Creative Cloud. Um, in addition to colors, I do have 
I was developing a particular branding style for different projects. And for my WebEx guides, I do have specific uh, ways of how my title looks, how my subtitles look, how different things look. And if I want to use it, whoops, let me undo that. I'm going to add a title. I'm just going to call it the title just because we're doing a quick demo. Um, highlight the text and click on my paragraph styles. And now that I have it in my Creative Cloud library, if I want to come back to it, it's there ready for me at any time. Learning Dev Camp. I have a color palette specific for that. I don't have, I've been using these as my standard uh, text options of the moment. And they travel back and forth with me. Now we've been focusing more on the Adobe Creative Cloud within the program. How can we use it online? When you work with Adobe Creative Cloud on a Mac, you have the Adobe Creative Cloud icon up here. I forget where it is on a PC. I believe it's in the uh, lower right-hand corner with all those other icons in the task bar. And I'm looking at my PC right now. Yes, it is. So we're going to view this on the web. And it's going to take me to the Adobe Creative Cloud website. I want to maximize this so we can see more of it. Now, there are, we've been talking about libraries. I've been talking about how we can bring in different colors, different texts. If I wanted to, I could share these with other people by clicking on this and hitting the share button. And then I can get a link. I'm going to copy the link, and I'm going to paste it here. And now everyone has access to my colors for Madison College. I hope Madison College doesn't mind. But uh, in addition to that, we have files. I didn't get too much into that within the Adobe products, but whenever I work in Photoshop or whenever I work inside of um, InDesign, I sometimes export stuff out and I will upload stuff here or I will um, create multiple copies of the same picture in Photoshop, but have them exported in different sizes, one for print, one for video, and one for media or social media. And that's what these 2x, 4x, and 1600 DPI are for. Um, so if I open my 2x folder, I have this nice little graphic that I exported from Photoshop. And I told it to save inside of my Creative Cloud library. Now I got another size of that. It's four times the size, so it's bigger, has more detail to it. And that one I would use more for print or maybe even uh, 4K video. I'm going to go back to the files here. So these are more pictures that I've exported from uh, Adobe, uh, from Photoshop to create different guides. These are different objects that I've created uh, for the 360 guide that I did for uh, learning DevCamp. Well, I'm going to go out of here for a moment, and I am going to open up a Finder window. Now, that's great and all. You know, well, we talked about transferring colors, blocks of text. We talked about, uh, well, I talked about how to uh, export from Photoshop into these different folders. Um, if there's time, I can go over that, because uh, I think that is a really great uh, technique to learn. But you can install Creative, a Creative Cloud folder on your desktop computer.
start a new folder. Hey, this would be a good time to test that out. Okay. Um, you can start a new folder and it will appear here in a moment. TLDC folder. <laughs> Let's pull that up over here. I just created it here. It uploaded to the Creative Cloud, and there it is, just like Dropbox, just like Google Drive, just like uh, whatever cloud sharing service that you have. All right. So I'm going to pretend this document is ready to go. Oh, wait, I'm in InDesign. <laughs> Let's go to Photoshop. There we go. Whenever you're working with a project, either you're working with icons, trying to create icons, working with different photographs, whatever you do in Photoshop, you can export it out in different sizes. If I can go to File, Export, and then Export As. From here, I get to choose my scale. how big I want it. I get to choose the format that I want, the size. If I want to add more sizes to this, I can click this plus button here. I could create another one that's maybe half the size of this. Click the plus button, and I'm going to create one that's just the same size. I can adjust settings here. I can save it as a JPEG, as a GIF, as a SVG file. I could change the sizes here, change the canvas size, add metadata, all that jazz. But when I click Export All, it's going to ask me where I want to export it at. So I'm going to go to my Creative Cloud. I created this folder called TLDC, and I'm going to open it. It's doing its thing. And now I have three different versions of this. I got one that's regular size, one that's half the size, and one that's double the size. Let me go back into my Creative Cloud. I believe it was in Safari, yes. Open up that folder, and it syncs up to the cloud. And it's ready for me to use inside of my many Adobe uh, projects. Oops, you can upload files from here if you want. But that's not what I wanted. I wanted to know how to share this. Click button, share this, get link. Allow save, allow download. I'm going to copy this link, and I'm going to pop it in here if you want to take a quick look at it. Or if you want to surprise me and upload something, that's cool too. But just remember, this is a public link. So we talked about how to upload stuff from the desktop. We saw how it uploads stuff from the desktop to the Adobe Creative Cloud. This is a very powerful tool that's built into um, all the Adobe products. Uh, I stumbled upon this two, three months ago, and my mind was blown. And the inspiration for this particular TLDC cast is the uh, life hacks, the tips and tricks cast that happened a few weeks back. And I'm like, this has to be shared with everyone. Now, uh, we demonstrated how things go up, how things come down. Next thing we're going to talk about is Premiere Rush. Premiere Rush is a, a multi-platform video editor. You can bring in video. You can record video. Um, you can bring in text. Uh, not text, <laughs> photos. You can add text. It's a very basic video editor. But what makes this very unique is that it uses Adobe Creative Cloud. It uses Adobe Creative Cloud to sync materials between one device and another. And we're reaching about the halfway mark. Um, I'm going to take a moment before we move into Adobe Rush to answer any questions that have popped up. Are, and this one, are the CC libraries shareable? 
across a team with CC Enterprise? The answer is yes. And it was answered. So I'm going to mark that as answered. <laughs> Using that share uh, share button, you can share with uh, other people, and they would show up in their Adobe Creative Cloud library as well. Hey, Alan, I'm going to jump in here. I'm just curious about a couple of things. What, how come you didn't use it? Before, like, why weren't you using Adobe Cloud Sync? I, it seems since you know, it seems like you've probably been a long time Adobe user. Is it sort of like me, where you just never really looked into it, or? Um, I've seen demos of it, and I haven't had any experiences with it, or needed anything that required me to use it yet. And when I started working on documentation, that's when it clicked. I'm like, OMG, that's what I need. Yeah, yeah. Because even for me, branding guidelines, I mean, mm -hmm. I'm always like struggling to, you know, to, <laughs> to I have to go back to like, I'm like, oh, where is it? Where's my where's my branding guide again? It's like, what was that, you know, that hex color for this? And, you know, mm -hmm. it seems like I can just open that up, you know, because it's actually I find Adobe Creative Cloud for the most part is more annoying to me than anything because it's always updating and asking me stuff mm -hmm. and I'm having to log in on different computers. I'm like, ah, this is such a pain. But I <laughs> see how this cloud sync can be like so useful. And I'm sort of curious if anybody else that is in the live audience right now, um, you, if they use cloud sync, um, it looks like maybe Rick does, but uh, um, I'd love to see uh, if, if anybody else has experience with it. Okay, and I will disappear now. Yeah, if you have experience, go ahead and put it up in the chat. Uh, we answered that question. OK, there we go. All right, so we're going to go into Adobe Creative, or not Adobe Creative, no, Adobe Premiere Rush. Uh, it's my new favorite easy video editor. It does a lot of things that. Windows Movie Maker did. It does a lot of things that iMovie does. Um, but I love the fact that you can start on one device and transfer it to another. I love the fact that it is multi-platform, PC, Mac, iOS, and Android. And Sam has experience with Adobe Clip and in Premiere. Um, yeah, that, those Adobe Clip is OK, but this one's actually a mobile video editor. And when you're done with a project in Adobe Premiere Rush, you can actually import that project into Premiere. So if you're a more advanced video editor and you just need to cut something on the fly, you can start it out on your mobile device, do your cuts there, and then transfer that to Adobe Premiere. And with that, I am going to turn off my video and turn on the screen sharing again. Oh, Sam, you're going to have a lot of, uh, you're going to love Rush. And I am going to check this out. OK, um, I should post a picture. I'm working with like four different monitors here, so I get confused as to what I'm looking at. Here we go. Let's hide extras. Let's minimize this. Let's minimize that. Do that. And now let's bring up the iPad. Photoshop Express. Oh, wow. I don't have it here. So I'm going to switch gears, and I'm going to start uh, downloading it. So please forgive me a moment. I am going to stop screen sharing. I grabbed the wrong device here. A lot of buildup, and then uh, I didn't check my device. Excuse me for a moment. Maybe yes. I'll I can yes, thank you. Like yeah, sure. It's like so. What like what are other what kind of other video editors are people using? Like I'm currently I use Camtasia as my primary, and and I like it. I don't create a ton of video. I don't do a ton of video, 
But um, from what little I do with like just sort of personal family stuff and editing my little my five year old son's sort of adventures in in the world, I <laughs> I like to use Camtasia for that. But uh, I'm just curious as to what other people are using. I've used Adobe Premiere. I've used it to create sort of marketing pieces and stuff for for TLDC. Mm-hmm. But uh, what else are people out there using? Uh, I love. I have this love hate relationship with Camtasia. Um, because it's so close to being professional grade that whenever I do my shortcuts for Final Cut, they don't work. And the, I have no way to remap the shortcuts. And that just makes me angry. I'm like, no. I, yeah, I, because it could do so much, uh, but the shortcuts, they're not there for me. That's what makes me really frustrated. Yeah, I love the simplicity of, of Camtasia. Um you know, and so that's one of I think that's one of one of the reasons why it was my go to premiere just seemed like it was so much for, you know, so much for what I was using a video editor for, but, um, you know, was definitely um, super mm-hmm. powerful. Yes. And so that's why it sounds like premiere rush is somewhere in between, maybe plus it's, you know, mobile and, you know, does it run on Android because I'm an Android guy? Yep. Okay. And so you just go to your store and download it to your thing. Um, you may have to sign in. If you're an enterprise user, you may have to sign in with your enterprise credentials. Um, if you're from a um, higher ed institution or a K-12 institution and you have Adobe Creative Cloud Enterprise through the institution, you might have to sign in with your work email address. Okay. I like Joe's comment here. Good for screen recordings and simple projects but it really chokes with lots of clips on the timeline. Oh, wait, Joe, is that about, are you talking about Camtasia or are you talking about um, uh, Premiere Rush? Oh, Camtasia, okay. Mm-hmm. You can add 99 tracks of video or stuff into a Camtasia project. I wouldn't recommend it. <laughs> <laughs> and Sam is using DaVinci Resolve. I've never even heard of that. So- oh, nice shooting cinema quality stuff on a black magic. Ooh, a, oh, nice. I like that setup. Cool. Right. Oops. I'm back. All right. Yeah, it looks like you disappeared there for a second. So, Sam, those videos that you've been recording, I've seen on LinkedIn. Is that what you're using to um, to film those? Have you been using, is it DaVinci Resolve and um, with that black magic? Oops. Oh, and there you go. Mm-hmm. Is this Adobe Premiere Rush? This is Adobe Premiere Rush. All right. Well, I am going to drop off my voice. And- <laughs> so uh, I open it up, and this is Adobe Premiere Rush. On the um, left-hand side, we get to see our pictures on this particular device. If we are connected to Creative Cloud, we have access to those pictures that we created, even that TLDC one that we created earlier. Uh, If you have access to Dropbox, you could set that up. I'm not gonna set that up. But where we start out is here. Uh, I'm gonna start out with the camera roll. I have a lot of 360 pictures in here, a lot of 180 pictures, so I don't have a lot of content to work with on this particular iPad. And I just pick and choose the things that I want to use. So it does it through 360. I've been using this to edit uh, my 360 photos using Lightroom. Uh, And I'll talk, if there's time, I'll talk about that too. And uh, Adobe Creative Cloud Sync. So I just went through my library. I picked out the stuff that I wanted. It puts it in order. Uh, In the lower left-hand corner of the screen, I make sure that my sync with Creative Cloud checkbox is checked. Right above that, we have our beginning timeline. This isn't where we do our cutting yet. It's just kind of getting us piecing our our project together. Right above that is the project name, and we're going to call this test. And then in the lower right-hand corner of the device, I hit the Create button, and it creates that for me. Uh, 
Unsupported media type cannot be entered. OK, that's fine. Let's go ahead and hit the plus sign. Let's go ahead and capture something. And let's flip this. Hello, everybody. Uh, doing a quick video. So uh, you could bring in your own, um, you could record on the fly and incorporate that into your video. You can add capture. Let's go ahead and try this again. Hello. You can add different um, number one. That's good. Check mark. Good. So when you add something in the lower right-hand corner, you tap that button, and you're able to bring that in. I take two fingers, and I swipe to make this larger, make a reverse pinch. I pinch in to bring it closer. If I want to change the order of my content, I just pick it up and drop it in place. If I want to cut this, this is a video. I just grab the handles on the right-hand side and just drag it to the left or to the right. And that adjusts the timing of this particular picture. If I do the same thing here on the video that I just recorded, I could drag this to the left or to the right to adjust the length of the video clip. You have your standard transitions, your standard text. And you just type the one that you want. You have all sorts of different options to change the uh, font size, the color, and whatnot. If you tap on the title itself on the screen, you can change it out. There we go. Close enough. Just doing a quick demo. We're not trying to be Scorsese here or anything like that. Now I'm going to make this smaller. I'm going to try to make it the length of my video. And whenever I do edits or cuts, it automatically snaps to the end. I don't know if you could see that, but when it gets closer to the edge of a video, it will snap. And there it is. I'm going to hit the text away. Now, if I'm happy with this, I can hit the share button in the upper left hand side. And I could export it to Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, or Behance. Behance is a Adobe product which allows you to build a portfolio. I'm going to go to my home screen. These are other projects that I have. And now let's go ahead and switch over to a computer. So I'm going to hop out of my video. I'm going to close screen sharing. And I hope this works. I got a USB box that will convert the video, um, any video stream into a webcam. So I will change my video up and change it to the capture. And we'll hit there. Oh, it's backwards. Well, we're going to roll with that. Right now, I have my PC loaded here on the screen. Uh, you saw earlier when I was screen sharing the different projects that I have, the different thumbnails. Well, um, I. Hey, all right, good. It's not backwards for y'all. That's great. <laughs> I have my little project here. Hello. If I open this up, two clicks. Going to wait for that to open up. 
and then it will download the project from Creative Cloud. It will download the assets from Creative Cloud, and I am able to continue working on this. It says that I don't have the assets here. That's because they're going up. It takes a while for it to go up. And it takes a while for it to go down. If I hit my media button here, I got my project assets. And they're going to be back in a moment. Then we'll give that some time to go up and come down. But as you can see, uh, it's a very basic tool. It's a very cool tool, uh, very easy to use. I am totally geeking out about this because just the fact that I can start on any device and finish up on any device is great. I'm not a Premiere user. I've used it in the past. But if you are a Premiere user, you could take that and bring it into your Premiere project. Whatever you create in uh, Rush, you can bring it into the full version of Premiere and continue working on that. Now, um, since we got a little bit of time, oh, audio editing, yes, you can. Let's go ahead and pull up my screen share again. And we're going to go back to the iPad. I'm going to open up this project. So I've highlighted my video. On the right-hand side of the screen, I have uh, my various tools, but the one with the square with the little audio icon. I can tap that. I could adjust the volume. I could balance sound. I could reduce noise. These are just kind of basic, quick uh, audio filters. You can't do anything really intense. That's what you would need Premiere for or some other audio video editor. But yeah, you could do some basic audio editing on the fly. Cut audio. Uh, yes, you can cut audio. You could bring audio in. And then um, like you wanted a soundtrack behind your video, just cut it in, and that will work. Now, I got a little bit of time. So I want to share one more thing with you. And that's with Adobe Creative Cloud Sync. I'm going to bring up, uh, give me a moment to bring up something. Bring up my Creative Cloud, and then we go back to screen share. This one I discovered accidentally like two weeks ago. Because you can, you can sync your files to the cloud, but you can edit your photos. If you use a lot of photos and you want some quick editing, you can go to the online version of Lightroom. I was syncing my 360 videos into Lightroom because I wanted to clean up a particular picture. I wasn't uh, able to do this cleanly in Photoshop, the desktop version. I wasn't able to do this with other photo editing tools. I just wanted to adjust the brightness of this particular video or this particular photo. But with Lightroom, you're able to see, well, it's kind of flickering right now. But you're able to see um, the picture that you're working on. You're able to edit from here online. I'm just going to do a couple of extreme edits so that you can see the changes that are being made. Wow, I should have really went with that one. That looks great. <laughs> I might have to replace this in my uh, VR tour. Uh, but let's give this a sickly yellow hue. I don't like that. I'm going to go back to its original spot. But if you want a kind of a quick uh, photo editor, you have this Adobe Lightroom built into Adobe Creative Cloud. There is Adobe Lightroom app for iOS that you can 
bring in your photos and edit. And when you bring in your photos and edit on the iOS device, it will bring it into Lightroom. And if you use Lightroom on your computer, it will uh, pop up there too. So a lot of these that I've discovered, I'm still learning, I'm not an expert, but I love this and I love trying to figure out how it could be used uh, in production or just for my own needs. Hey, Alan, <clears throat> I'm gonna jump in here real quick. So just those 360 videos, was that something you captured those with a with a with a 360 device? Right? Yeah, um, uh, those are 360 pictures that I was pulling up. Mm -hmm. would, and would you use um, to to capture those pictures? The uh, Insta 360 one. Okay, all right. Not not the X that uh, is the the bigger one, but the one the one that you can plug into your iPhone. Nice. Okay, and so then did you transfer that over to? A um, creative cloud, and then that's how, like, like you just did it because you did you did that editing on a, on an iPad mm -hmm. right then, right? Yeah. So you just dump that from your from your iPhone into Creative Cloud, and then you mm -hmm. got your iPad, and you're able to edit those 360 images that way. Yeah, I just imported the pitch um, on the Insta 360 One uh, camera. It syncs with an app, and from the app, you can have access to your photos transfer them to your ios device and then from your ios device you can work on your photos in lightroom wow that's great i didn't even know lightroom could could do any um, i know right <laughs> for like 360 images that's, um, that's pretty amazing wow that's very very cool so how often i mean is is has cloud sync become just sort of an everyday thing for you now you're just always using it it's it's a, it's a regular tool in your toolbox yeah it is i uh, I'm kind of knee deep in documentation right now, so I'm constantly using it that way. I want to use more of the Lightroom editing features mm -hmm. just so I can get it edited get it into the cloud and have it ready for me when I need to put it in InDesign or whatever project that I'm working with. Is Lightroom something, did you get any formal training on that or is it something you just sort of figured out? I kind of figured out. I'm looking at the thing. Yeah, but um, it has um, it's like the basic photo editor on steroids, right? It's yeah. not it's not Photoshop where you can go in and you know replace someone's head with a lizard head and you know create the background from blue to green. No, it's just like quick touch ups. Yeah, it's it's one of those programs that I've always wished that like I feel like I should just spend a weekend and maybe take a Udemy course or something, you know, just uh, <laughs> just get to understand it because it'll probably make my. Uh, my 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 output that much better just having some mm -hmm. skills in Lightroom, that's very cool. So, what kind of projects have you produced so far with Adobe Premiere Rush? Uh, just little quick, um, not how tos, but what's happening through today. Just kind of little things like that. And um, I'm going to turn on my screen sharing because mm -hmm. that brings up another point, another good point. Um, all right, there we go. One of the things that we can do inside of Adobe Creative Rush is, whoops, I have to work on the iPad. I don't click on the screen. In my video where it says hello and you see my face in the lower right-hand corner, there are uh, two rectangles, one standing up, one standing down. Well, that changes your canvas. I'm gonna tap the canvas button and it gives me different options. If I want to create an Instagram story video, I could select the portrait and it'll automatically set up this as a portrait uh, project. If I wanted to create a square video, uh, square video, I could create a square video, load that into my Instagram feed or uh, upload it to Twitter or whatever. Other, with Camtasia, you have to, uh, it's kind of hard to make those adjustments. Whereas with this, you hit a button and choose what you want. And as I'm kind of old school with my video editing, I do not like the tall format, the portrait format, but I've learned to love it uh, just because it does look great on a phone. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. no, that's, that's very cool. So what, can you, so you, have you created any training at all with Adobe Premiere Rush yet? But, um, you know, it's obvious that 
you know, I could see application for it, but uh, are you going to be working on any projects like that? No, not yet. Um, I could, I could see it working great with like quick room documentation, um, going in and showcasing the different areas of the room, or uh, maybe for OSHA purposes, this is a violation. How can you tell? Well, the ladder's not connected to whatever. Uh, I'm not a handyman, so I don't know the OSHA regulations for ladders, but I imagine there are a lot. Yeah. <laughs> so maybe even for like vloggers, it seems like it's perfect for that type of thing, especially mm -hmm. social media. And, um, you know, I'm one of those people that have like, you know, I, like I have a, I have a GoPro seven, which was ridiculous for me to purchase. Like I was thinking that I was going to start a vlog, but of course, like why would a middle-aged man like myself start a vlog, but I still want to. And so maybe Adobe Premiere Rush is the thing that uh, that takes me over the top and, and I finally do something like that. Yeah. No, very, very cool. Thank you so much for sharing this stuff, Alan. It's really uh, it's been amazing. Um, I love stuff like this and it really like helps like for now. Now I kind of have some weekend projects, right? You know, I'm going to mm -hmm. like, oh yeah, let's get this Adobe Cloud <laughs> thing going. And then I'll probably do a trial on Premiere Rush and see if that is something that I can regularly um, integrate into my, into, into my life. Um, you know, especially the tablet features, like just, you know, yeah. using it in, in on an iPad or whatever. It's, that's, that's pretty amazing. Um, so before we close out, Mark had a question about, um, it's a side question. Uh, how do I capture 360 photos on the iPad? Um, the Insta 361 is designed to fit on top of a iOS device or an Android device. Um, you could connect it directly to an iPhone, hold up the thing and then take your picture and it'll create that 360 picture. Or you could use your iPhone as a Bluetooth remote. You could set up your 360 device on a tripod, step away or hide, and then hit the shutter button and it will take the picture for you. That's awesome. I actually have a, I, a, one of the old Samsung 360 cameras I bought like years ago. I'm still, I'm, I'm sure that it's still a pretty good camera to have around. I just never use it. Cool. So how do people get a hold of you? How can they follow you? Um, why don't you give us your contact information as we wrap up here? Okay. Twitter is at not at you. So I'm going to put that there in the chat. I think I am not at you on LinkedIn. Well, if you look up Alan and then not at you, I am like the only Alan not at you. Uh, but if you look up not at you by itself, you're going to pull up a lot of runners from New Mexico and jewelry smiths and artisans uh, from Zuni Pueblo. So yeah, quick Google search on me. You'll be able to find me. I'm very public. All right. Thank you so much, everybody. Thanks. Thanks again for coming in and, and, and sharing this time with us on, on a Friday. Mm -hmm. uh, Looking forward to uh, seeing you again Monday again. We got Karen North, Chakra Smith, Wednesday, Andrew Hughes, Susan Manos, Friday next week, Thomas Seelock with the last uh, episode of the UX playlist. I might actually even have another guest next week. I'm still working it out on LinkedIn. Um, I don't want to bring it up because it may not happen, but it's somebody from out of the country, but I've been really wanting to get them on as part of the UX playlist thing. Um, so that might be a surprise, but anyway, Thanks, everybody. Thanks for coming in. Have a great weekend, and uh, we'll see you next time. Okay. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Thanks, Alan.